Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And the 1.11.1 test server was just released yesterday, and with it came a whole new branch of Italian auto reloading heavy tanks. And in today's video, that's indeed what I'm going to focus on. I'm going to let you know everything that I've been able to figure out so far about the four new Italian auto reloading heavy tanks, giving you some tips and tricks about how I would probably research them first so you can be fully prepared when they enter the game in the next update, probably in about three or most likely four weeks from now. So firstly, if you haven't done so already, like I've been saying for months, the new Italian heavy tanks start at tier 7, branching from the P43 bis. And so if you haven't rebought this tier 6 Italian medium tank, hint hint, with that discount that you get from the Holiday Ops event, do so now and start getting yourself some experience on it by of course unchecking accelerated crew training on this vehicle. You're going to need 57,750 experience if you want to be able to purchase the brand new tier 7 Italian heavy tank, the heavy tank Caro DSO P88 on the day of release. So just what is the P88 all about and how hard is it to be able to use the vehicle, should we say, stock? So the stock gun on this vehicle doesn't look like the worst thing I've ever seen. Its damage permitted is actually pretty good with a decent rate of fire that is better than quite a few tier 8 medium tanks inside the game. 240 alpha damage feels decent as well. The penetration, however, pretty lackluster. 164 on your standard rounds and 198 on your premium rounds. It's not really going to be very good when you're dealing with those tier 9, let alone tier eight matchups. Unfortunately, if you're expecting to have an auto reloading capability right from the get go, as soon as you purchase the tier seven Italian heavy tank, well, that's not going to be the case. The tier seven Italian heavy tank, even with the top gun and the top turret does not, not have an auto loader. Bizarrely enough, we can see that the damage per minute of the top gun on this vehicle, which has the same alpha damage, has massively worse rate of fire. And so if you're a gold noob, you might actually be able to make the stock gun work better, but if you rely on having penetration at 202 on your standard rounds and 220 on your broom rounds, yeah, that top gun is, is probably going to be better for you. Interestingly enough on this vehicle, the upgraded turret is actually lighter than the stock turret, so that means that you don't need to get the tracks if you want to be able to progress towards getting the top gun or even to move towards the Progetto 54 on this tank. And it's exactly the same thing with the engine on this vehicle as well. It's 300 kilograms lighter, has 90 extra horsepower and will definitely transform this vehicle into a much more mobile heavy tank. So what does it look like? Well, I don't know about you, but it kind of reminds me of an AMX M445 at tier 7. Yeah, I, I, the front plate, although it looks pretty good, unfortunately, if we go on to Tanks GG in a second, you're going to see that its uh, armor is actually quite poor. The vehicle has a very large silhouette, as we can see here. Although it's quite low profile, it might have one of the better camo ratings of uh, a he tier 7 heavy tank, at least. Unfortunately, even with the fully upgraded turret, ah, oh, yeah, it's not particularly wonderful news for this tank. And even if you're using the 8 degrees of gun depression that this vehicle has, if they can hit to the left or the right outside the mantlet, you're not going to be having a good time. But at least you do have this big, chunky mantlet that extends all the way to the forehead of the vehicle. That means that this thing, you, you probably want to take your chances with getting hit in the turret against pretty much everything that you're going to meet. Hope that they bounce, and as long as you can pen them, you should be good. Very interestingly enough, this thing's lower lower plate as I'm going to call it here is incredibly well angled and so if you were to over angle the frontal armor on this vehicle you'd actually have 200 millimeters of protection on the upper hull and that lower lower plate will be able to ricochet very well indeed bit bizarre this tank's side scraping capacity though is going to be poor with this whole big flap over the side of the tank that if you see these things on the battlefield and undoubtedly you will be seeing them at tier 7 you're going to be able to shoot shoot that but I guess it's not the easiest thing to be able to predict and shoot and you're going to still be able to pull off some miracle bounces one thing that's bizarre about the Caro P88 is just how much better the damage per minute the aim time and the accuracy is if you're using the stock gun which I'm showing here with that top turret and the only thing you really have to worry about there is the penetration but if you were to play it kind of like a medium tank it would still be okay. Accordingly, I'm going to recommend that the last thing that you upgrade on this vehicle is actually the gun. I would probably go for the turret first, as that does massively improve the performance even of the stock gun of this tank. Then I'd probably go for the engine, the tracks, and then follow it up with that final gun. Unless you absolutely hate the penetration, you find yourself firing too much gold, and then maybe you should just go for that top gun anyway. Now firstly, let me clarify, this is the first iteration of the test server, and everything is subject to change. Wargaming could massively buff the statistics of all of the vehicles I discuss in 
in the video today or they could subsequently nerf them. Although I really don't think that's going to be the case because when I look at the statistics of this tank, it does look rather poor. Terrible view range, 350. You're not going to be able to spot for yourself. Mediocre hit points at tier 7 at 1,250. The armor on this vehicle, well, it's angled. It definitely has weak points. The vehicle goes at 35 forwards, 12 backwards with an okay power to weight ratio. That definitely doesn't make it the most dynamic heavy you've ever played. The 8 degrees of gun depression is nice, but to have such horrific accuracy and such horrific aim time definitely affects the vehicle and while the penetration is okay with that top gun the damage per minute is totally not okay for the 240 alpha damage that this vehicle has and i expect that this thing if it stays it is is going to be a really poor tier 7 heavy tank in the hands of the average player i think that the more skilled and competent players out there are probably going to be able to make this thing work because they'll understand how the armor works on this tank and how important it is to make the gun depression work with some of those auto ricochet angles but all in all i don't think it's looking good so far for the italian heavy branch if you if you, all you do is just play the tier 7. So now let's jump up to tier 8 and I present the Progetto 54. So the Progetto 54, a vehicle that is going to have to compete with the Basante. And oh, wow, look at this thing. This thing looks a little bit funky, right? Definitely looks different to its tier 7 counterpart. It's definitely got that long hull. I, I feel like the turret looks fairly modern. And I like how angled the, uh, the mantlet is on this tank. It's just not flat. That's absolutely wonderful. And to have those angled cheeks there on the side should prove very good. The hull is a unique design. It's got such this kind of curved nature on the front, which means that if you're using your gun depression, it'll be very good. But I can imagine that lower plate, unless it's, whoa, it's actually quite angled. I'm looking forward to seeing what the armor model is like. All in all, definitely looks like a fairly uh, different kind of unique style and I'm sure that once you get to tier 8 you're probably going to enjoy it a lot more than having the tier 7. Alright so how would I upgrade this vehicle? Well the first thing to do is to look at the differences in the turrets and when I first looked at them you'll notice that I thought what? The, the stock turret actually has the better armor at 200 but then I quickly figured out once I looked at the armor model of the tier 8 Italian heavy tank that of course is going to have to be able to compete with the Basante that um, that's just not the case. Look at the difference between this is the upgraded turret here the one that's thinner that's only 180 millimeters thick but just look at how much and more effective it's going to be. This is 235 here pretty good cheeks as well will have auto ricochet angles until you turn them so make sure you're keeping your gun pointed directly at your opponents but if we were to use the stock turret on this tank even though it's thicker at 200 the actual cheeks are not angled enough to be able to provide auto ricochets and so that makes it incredibly bad from pretty much every single angle and while it is too 200 millimeters thick it is very flat just to the left and the right of the gun and you have a big old weak point on top as well so this is definitely a case where the turret completely changes the way that you're going to be able to play the tank and i would thoroughly recommend upgrading the turret on this thing as quickly as you possibly can all right so now that you want to focus on the, the turret, the problem with this turret is unlike the previous vehicle, it's actually much heavier. You can see it's two tons heavier on this tank, which means that you're going to have to get the tracks if you want to use equipment on this tank as well. The engines, however, is pretty much similar to the previous vehicle. Look at this. This is going to be one of the biggest differences you could ever have on this tank. You lose 270 kilograms, but you gain 250 horsepower. That is going to revolutionize the way that you are able to play this vehicle. The fact that this engine weighs so much less and is so much more powerful means that I would probably consider upgrading the engine first on this tank. And funnily enough, that also means that you could be able to get the turret on this tank with the stock tracks and also use full equipment on the vehicle before you have to upgrade the tracks. But as the upgraded gun on this vehicle is actually heavier, then you're going to have to get the gun after that. And so my recommended upgrade path for the Progetto CC55 Mod 54 is to get the engine first, then get the turret. That means that you can still use equipment on the vehicle, then I'd get the tracks, then I'd actually get the gun. And the reason for that is that as it stands, the upgraded gun is really not that much of an advantage on this tank. All it does with the stock turret is increases the penetration that you have on your standard rounds by 18 and increases the penetration on your premium rounds by a, a measly 12 millimeters. And you can see that here because let me explain how I presented these Progetto 54s to you. And that is the, the two on the left have the stock turrets and this one has the stock gun. This one has the upgraded gun, while the two on the right have the upgraded turret, 
with the tank on the left having the stock gun and the tank on the right having the upgraded turret with the upgraded gun. And we can see there's practically no difference. If you upgrade the turret, it does improve the aim time, improve the accuracy, and if you're using the upgraded gun, it also improves the dispersion of the vehicle. And this lack of difference on the gun means that it'll be the last thing that I personally choose to upgrade on this tank. Once again, I'm going to go engine, turret, tracks, then I'm going to end up getting the top gun on this tank. So the exciting thing about getting the Progetto 54 is that it's going to be the first Italian auto-reloading heavy tank that you get to play, unless of course you manage to get the Basante by gambling inside the loot crates this year. And it is a, it's a, it's a, it's an exciting gun to use. It has 320 alpha damage. It has a three round auto reloader that has a three and a half second intraclip reload. But the damage per minute on this vehicle is incredibly poor. It's 1,500. And that is if you're only firing one shot and then reloading one shot and then reloading one shot and then reloading. And if you go deeper into the magazine, your reload is actually going to be 16 seconds, which means the actual damage per minute of the vehicle, if you are firing it dry, is, oh dear, 1,200 damage per minute. That's not going to be very good at all. And when we compare this thing to the Basante, I mean, if you have been lucky enough to get that vehicle, I don't really feel that there's too many reasons to want to play the tier 8 at least as it stands, which is a bit of a disappointment for me because I felt like with the last big introduction of tanks into the game, the double barrel branch, the Wargaming made the IS-32 a valid choice compared to the Object 7032. I, I think that I'd still rather play the 7032, but the IS-32 at least it had that kind of role on the battlefield I do enjoy playing it. So to compare quick, quickly the Progetto 54 to the Basante C45, the Progetto 54 just has worse damage per minute across the board. It has a tiny little pen advantage. It has lower alpha damage, 320 instead of 360. But here's the absolutely bizarre thing. Even though it has the worst damage, it also has the longer intraclip reload, so it will deliver 960 damage in 7 seconds rather than 1080 damage in 6 seconds. I'd say also the vehicle's armor is, is way worse, the turret doesn't feel like it's as good as the Basante. If you're using the 9 degrees of gun depression that this vehicle has, it, sure it's upper uh, area above the gun's going to be good, but its cheeks are going to take shots. Its hull armor is only good if you're using that gun depression. If you're not, its lower plate is very weak on this tank. The tank's premium ammunition is 242 millimeters of, of gold ammo, whereas the Basante has 270 on its heat rounds. The only saving grace for the Progetto 54 is that it has better aim time, better accuracy, and better gun handling, which actually means that on this tank, I would recommend that you don't double stack vertical stabilizers in the rotation device, as I love to do on the Basante because it's its weakest attribute, the gun handling. I would probably end up dropping the rotation device altogether, or at least dropping the vertical stabilizers, and instead investing that into maybe some coated optics to be able to see further and try and play some kind of role on a ridge line. To add to it, while the vehicle does actually have a really nice power to weight ratio at 17.71 once you get that fully upgraded engine, which is better than the Basante, it doesn't really have the top speed to be able to use it. 45 forwards and 12 backwards will definitely hold this vehicle back, and the 370 meters view range means that you're, you're definitely going to have to take coated optics or binoculars if you want to see your opponents at decent distances, if you want to play that pseudo medium role. And for all of you out there, if the statistics of this tank stay as they are, I would thoroughly recommend to play this thing as a medium tank. Don't take this to go and fight against the heavies. They're going to overpower you with their higher alpha damage. They're going to overpower you with sometimes their better penetration and their better armor. I thoroughly recommend you use the excellent power to weight ratio of this vehicle. Maybe even slap a turbo on the tank to be able to go and fight the medium tanks where your armor will matter, your alpha damage will matter, and hopefully you can whittle them down with your auto reloader to be able to get them into a position where you can deliver that 960 damage in seven seconds. Gosh, the more that I say that, the more that it really just doesn't feel too impressive. Even something like a T69 delivers that in six seconds, and then trust me, it doesn't have the world most awful reload afterwards, right? All right, so so far it's not looking so hot for the Italian auto reloading heavy branch, but tier nine is often where a tank tech tree can come into its own. Is the Progetto C50 Mod 66 going to be the one that changes this? Well, I can tell you, kind of. There's a lot to talk about here. There's three different guns. There's two different turrets. There's three engines, of which all of them are unique, and you're going to have to uh, research. Yeah, 47,000 experience for that top engine. Uh, 27,000 for that mid-engine. It is going to get expensive. But take a look at this tank. 
this thing looks modern in my opinion. Wow, this vehicle really did change uh, my kind of vibe for the Italian auto-reloading heavy tanks. Uh, the, kind of the back of the turret looks like a Chieftain or an Abrams kind of thing. It definitely looks very modern to me. The way that the hull armor is shaped, this thing feels like an all-purpose vehicle. So firstly, let's take a look at the three different guns that are available on the Mod 66, and we'll imagine that we're using the top turret for them. So the vehicle has two 105mm guns and a 120mm gun. And the 105mm gun, there's a clear winner here i.e. the one that has the extra round, the one that has the extra penetration on its standard rounds and its gold rounds and better accuracy. But did you notice just how bad the aim time is? 3.1 seconds on that top gun. The top 105mm gun can be equipped without having to upgrade the turret. But be warned that this gun actually only has a three round auto reloading magazine if you're using the stock turret which kind of defeats the whole point of researching it first but once you finally get to upgrade that turret you have a four round auto reloader but do you notice how bad the aim time just became it went from if you're using the stock turret at 2.4 seconds to 3.1 seconds why is the aim time getting worse uh, as we upgrade the turret on this tank i guess that's because we're getting a whole extra round interestingly enough this 105 millimeter gun actually gives the 120 millimeter gun a run for its money the 120 millimeter on this tank has very impressive high explosive penetration at 120 it has very good gold penetration at 303 but you notice how the standard penetration is actually 242 compared to the 258 on the 105 millimeter on this tank and while the 120 has 400 alpha damage it actually has one less round but when we consider that the reload time is 13 compared to 12 when the vehicle's fully loaded that actually suggests to me that the damage per minute of the 120 is going to be better and once i added it to tanks gg yes i could confirm that you're seeing the Progetto 66 with the 105mm on the left and the Progetto 66 with the 120mm on the right. And we can clearly see that that is a very good damage per minute. 1,846 is good for an auto-reloading tank to have at tier 9. And while you do have that bad pen, I guess you could always just load the gold on this vehicle and have 303mm of heat pen at tier 9 compared to 281mm of APCR. And sure, while your shell velocity is going to be rough, I'd load heat for those kind of close quarters situations if you are using the 120mm and still be using armor piercing rounds for your longer range shots. As the 105mm has 320 damage, even though it has that extra round inside the vehicle when we fire all three shells of the 120 at 400 alpha damage the difference in magazine potential is not very much if you consider that you fired a whole extra shell the 105 will deal 1280 damage within nine seconds of the first shot whereas the 1200 damage that you're able to deal with seven seconds of the first shot with those three 120 millimeter rounds doesn't really feel like that much less to only have 80 damage difference but be able to unload it in a whole two seconds less the 120 millimeter is just going to be absolutely superior for being able to do damage in bursts and also it's nice to have that extra alpha damage for when you need to finish tanks off and considering that you can reload in 13 seconds rather than 12 if you're firing the vehicle cyclically and not using the auto loading capacity to have that higher damage per minute i personally think that the 120 millimeter gun is going to be the superior weapon to use on this vehicle. That's compounded by the fact that unless you want to use the stock turret on the Progetto 66, the 105mm gun currently has very bad aim time at 3.1 seconds compared to the 2.7 seconds that the Progetto 66 has, which cements that, in my opinion, if you're a premium player and you can afford to fire heat, then the 120 is going to be better. Arguably, if you're a free-to-play player and you never want to fire heat, however, you could do well with the 105 and the extra penetration that that gun has and also the extra accuracy that you want to be engaging at longer distances all right so let's compare this tank to the previous vehicle as if we were using the 120 so the pen is up the alpha is up the dpm is significantly up the magazine potential is very nice i like 1200 damage within seven seconds that's great the vehicle's more accurate it's still got nine degrees of gun depression its dispersion is a little bit worse but i don't think it's so bad that you would want to use vertical stabilizers and a rotation device on this vehicle i would choose one or the other if you feel like you want to have the extra mobility with the tank traverse then and the turret traverse then go for the rotation device if you want to have the extra dispersion probably go for the vertical stabilizers if you're grinding your way through this vehicle and you have 
bounty rotation device on this tank, I would probably go for that one, but I wouldn't use a regular rotation device on this vehicle if you only have access to standard vertical stabilizer to compare it to, for example. So while the vehicle goes forwards and backwards at the same speed as the Progetto 54, we can currently see that its power to weight ratio is significantly worse. The vehicle, however, does have a good slab of hit points at 1,850 and 390 meters view range. And let's take a look at the armor of the Progetto 66 once you get this thing fully upgraded. Oh yeah, I can make that work. This is against 242 millimeters of penetration. The whole of the cheeks here are about 250 to the left and the right of the gun, and 300 outside of that. The tank doesn't have a very big forehead, and so if you're using the gun depression that this vehicle has, oh baby, that is some armor. 300 millimeters to the left and the right of the gun. So that means that if you're in a tier 9 and tier 10 tank with about 340 millimeters of gold pen, you could probably shoot to the left and to the right of the Progetto 66 turret. Just to show you what that looks like visually so you can get an idea you don't want to be shooting the mantlet you want to be shooting to the left and to the right of the gun although when i actually look at it the mantlet isn't even that good on this tank but remember that is spaced armor and so if you're firing armor piercing rounds high caliber armor piercing rounds like on a tier 10 tank destroyer for example or even some tier 9 tds you could probably make that work or apcr rounds for example if you only have heat at your disposal you're actually probably best to fire to the left and to the right here and as we can see you can't actually manage to penetrate there with high explosive high explosive anti-tank rounds whereas if you fire to the left and the right of the gun with a uh, high explosive anti-tank this is 303 millimeters of pen you still got a pretty good chance if the vehicle's not using any of its gun depression its turret armor becomes quite weak but on a on like a ridge line hull this thing looks like a bit of a monster oh i just saw something pretty ugly about this vehicle boys and girls and that is that this kind of under flap uh, uh where the tracks go just underneath here on the vehicle is actually only 25 millimeters thick and so that means that if you see the vehicle trying to use its gun depression you can catch just under the flaps there then that means that you're going to be able to overmatch and shoot up into the vehicle that also means that if you get up underneath it you're going to be able to shoot up through the tracks and also into the under hull of the tank but all in all this thing looks like a really solid vehicle to have on a ridgeline what happens if you're not using any of your gun depression in this tank? How good is the armor then? Well, now it's about 230. Yeah, that's going to do well against tier 7s and tier 8s at least some of the time. But let's be honest, this vehicle wants to be on a ridgeline. It wants to be using some of its gun depression. That is a terrible side profile on the hull and also on the turret however but 70 millimeters of armor means that this thing can still side scrape it's just going to have that upper hull issue as it does come around the corner all in all this thing is kind of looking like the saving grace of the italian auto reloading heavy tanks so far at tier 7 and tier 8 this line has looked pretty poor but now that i'm seeing the tier 9 yeah i'm looking forward to being able to get this tank also a final word i'd like to mention the radio on this vehicle i would probably recommend not even bothering to get it it is it's heavier and it's got 40 meters extra signal range and it will cost you 9400 experience so i probably wouldn't even bother researching this as you make your way to the crown of the italian auto reloading heavy tanks which is the rinoceronte so this vehicle surely it's going to be the absolute best tank in the game now because it's the brand new tier 10 well that remains to be seen now if you've been subscribed to the channel for a while at least like a month or two you'll know that i've actually already got gameplay of being able to play test this vehicle but stay tuned to the channel as i will be having a full preview of the rinoceronte coming up fairly soon this tank looks absolutely awesome once you have it out on the battlefield when you depress the gun this part of the gun actually comes through the turret at the top and also when you elevate it it actually dips down into the turret which is a pretty funky looking thing it does have this kind of weird hull on it as well and the way that the cheeks work here it's kind of a mixed blessing it's, it's good when you're using the gun depression but it's also not good when you're not this vehicle we don't really have to talk about upgrading the vehicle at all because it comes with a 127 millimeter gun with a three round auto reloader with the biggest alpha damage on any non-tank destroyer auto loader in the game that's 490 per shell and if you manage to penetrate the 127 millimeter high explosive rounds that's 640 per shell that is going to be one of the best things for destroying artillery ever it's really interesting to me when i look at the statistics of this gun because it really looks as if wargaming are trying their darn hardest to be able to balance this tank so much so that they've actually decided to make the reloading time of one shell of this vehicle, 15.7.
usually auto loaders, usually auto reloaders, um, they have uh, specific seconds of times. It will either be, you know, 15 seconds or 16 seconds. It's really interesting to me that Wargaming have decided to fine tune it to a point of 15.7. It suggests to me that they may have already made up their mind about the Rinoceronte, but again, everything is subject to change. If they feel like it's not performing as well as they expect it to on the test server, these are all preliminary statistics and the vehicle may or may not be buffed. So let's add the vehicle in and compare it to the tier 9 tank to see whether it is going to be the new best vehicle of World of Tanks. All right, so what have we got to look forward to? Well, our DPM is hardly any better, but oof, I like that penetration. 268 millimeters on your standard rounds feels beautiful. And as I mentioned, really good high explosive rounds. 127 millimeters of pen. You're going to be able to do disgusting things to quite a few tanks tanks, especially light tanks. But the problem is, is the damage per minute and the reload time is just so darn long, whether you're going to be able to actually load those high explosive shells in time before the light tank realizes your presence and moves off is going to be another question. But that's almost guaranteed kills on all tier 10 self-propelled guns and below. Yeah, I, I can't wait to go into the enemy base ready for those artillery duels with the HE rounds loaded in this tank. A lot of HE rounds are just not high enough pen to be able to go through some of the thicker plates of artillery. These ones definitely will be. The vehicle also has really good high explosive anti-tank penetration at 325 which will be very nice one thing i like about these apcr rounds as well is this will have the best shell velocity i believe on any tier 10 heavy tank in the game 1452 and from my memory i guess the only tank that will possibly be able to compete with it with regards to standard ammunition will be the object 260 which has 1259 meters a second shell velocity so that shows you the rhinoceronte has its unique vibe and that is that it can do very well sniping at moving targets and if you like to be a bit of a sniper this 0.33 accuracy on this tank will definitely serve you very well which I can't believe I'm saying this also means that this will be a very good sniping heavy tank even though a lot of people will be kind of yeah biting down on themselves there a little bit because that's not really how you're meant to play heavy tanks after all right so the vehicle's 490 alpha damage allows you to do some wacky things the intraclip reload is rather long at four seconds it's one of the longest intraclip reloads on any auto reloading heavy tank or shall I say any auto reloading or even auto loading tank inside the game but to be able to do 490 damage doesn't really make it feel that bad the fact that you can burst out 980 damage within four seconds of the first shot look at it like this the st2 that I showcased on the channel yesterday has a five second intraclip reload to do 440 damage and then it has a very long reload after that the Rinoceronte is definitely one upped the st2 Although, remember that the damage per minute of the vehicle will definitely hold it up with that regard. And, of course, you don't have the luxury of being able to fire two barrels at the same time, which is very handy, right? Another thing I must mention is remember the damage per minute that you're seeing is, is as if you weren't going deeper and deeper into the magazine. Let's imagine that you're firing uh, the second shell or you're firing the third shell on repeat and just letting it reload and firing it on repeat. Well, that means that the damage per minute of this tier 10 heavy tank will dip to 1,470 or 1,729 respectively, depending on how many shells you've got left in the tank. And trust me, that is not gonna be enough damage per minute to deal with whatever is in front of you at, at tier eight, let alone tier 10, when some people have got kind of like double or even coming close to triple those kinds of hit points. If you have the durability module on the so maybe there's just two tanks coming at you at the same time right you aren't going to last long in those situations another thing that really sucks about the rhinoceronte is that it has some of the worst dispersion when moving on any vehicle that is not a tank destroyer that i've seen Point three means that you're probably going to want to be using vertical stabilizers and a rotation device on this tank. Or you better have some bond equipment, maybe some bond vertical stabilizers to put on this vehicle. Otherwise, even the slightest movements are going to make your reticle bloom out to a point where you're just not going to be effective. Also, the vehicle has a horrific statistic for firing with regards to bloom. After you fire this big 127 millimeter main armament, it's gonna take a long time to be able to get that reticle drawn back in to be fully aimed even with that four second intra clip reload for the next shell. 
One thing that is great about this tank, however, is that you've got 10 degrees of gun depression, makes this thing amazing on a ridgeline. The top speed limit on this tank is 40. I'm a little bit disappointed about that. After the tier 8 and the tier 9 were at 45 and 12 backwards, the fact that this thing has a little bit of a better power to weight ratio in the tier 9 really gave me some hope that this thing could be quite dynamic and quite fast. And I can tell you after some gameplay in this tank that it does feel a little bit slow, so much so that I ended up putting a turbocharger on this vehicle to try and increase that mobility as much as I possibly possibly could to actually get in the game and be able to get into those positions to be able to unload because that's what an auto loader or an auto reloader is meant to do it's meant to get to positions to dump magazines out on tanks of opportunity and if it doesn't have the mobility to be able to get there to deliver the shells after it's reloaded then the terrible damage per minute that this vehicle has feels just even worse uh, wargaming if you are looking for areas to buff this tank that's definitely one that i would consider i i'm not saying that we want to have this thing as a medium tank it definitely should feel more like a heavy but if you do find that this vehicle is underperforming on the test server I think one of the ways that you could buff this vehicle without making it just outrageously OP would be to make this one faster because that's the whole vibe that I'm getting for these Italian auto reloading heavies at tier 8 and tier 9 and to have it taken away from you at tier 10 it definitely will feel bad. So now let's talk about the armor of the Rinoceronte and when I take a look at it the statistics compared to the previous vehicle it doesn't look like it's gone up a whole tier correct me if I'm wrong 135 on the hull compared to 130 on the Progetto 66 190 on the turret compared to 195 on the Progetto 66 yeah this thing looks like a bit of a stink and the fact that your hit points are at 2,000, which I think is the lowest of any tier 10 heavy tank, along with the Kranvang, is, is, it's, it's definitely not filling me with any confidence here, boys and girls. Anyway, let's take a look at the armor loadout for the Rinoceronte. How does it deal with its own penetration? 268, a fairly standard amount of penetration for tier 10. All right, well, we're seeing some good things here. The turret armor, even if you're not angling it, is 274 millimeters of effective protection. That's great. Problem is, is that as soon as somebody loads the gold rounds, uh, yeah, now they're penetrating you pretty much 80% of the time. 285 millimeters of effective penetration against heat is not going to work. Uh, the hull against standard rounds, yeah, it's going to work quite a lot. This will be very good against tier 8s and tier 9s that don't have high amounts of penetration. But again, as soon as they load the gold and they have about 320, now you're going through this thing's armor pretty much consistently from whatever angle you're going to be able to hit it. And also... Is there something staring at you in the face right now? Uh, yeah, look at this, ladies and gents. This is something that I didn't even realize until I played this tank yesterday on the test server. That is a huge weak point on top of this tank. 181 millimeters of effective armor at this just weird triangle that's on top of the vehicle. Um, let me just let me just show it to you so you can see how much of an easy thing this is to be able to hit. This is as if you are looking at the Rinoceronte front on. It's it's a pretty big weak point on top of the tank, in my opinion. Um, that is that is quite an obvious thing to be able to hit. And if it can aim its gun at you, then you can aim your gun at it, right? And in fact, this will be something that you'll be able to come up over a ridgeline against an unexpected Rinoceronte and be able to hit it. Even from the side, even if it's angled like this, it doesn't actually ever get to a point where it's going to be an auto ricochet. It's just not very well angled at all. In fact, it has to go to like this before it's going to be able to have a chance to be able to, to ricochet a shot. This is um, a disaster for the tank, really, to have that kind of thing on top. But I also think that it's good that vehicles do have weak points. But if vehicles have weak points, you'd expect them to be really strong statistically in other areas. You'd expect it to be really fast. You'd expect it to have some kind of incredible um, high damage auto reloader rather than this kind of uh, cut down low DPM auto reloader. That while it does have um, alpha damage, it has intraclip that kind of holds it back as well. All in all, I'm just not feeling particularly wonderful about this tank. I can't say that when I play it, I want to love it. When I play this thing, I, you know, it's got a lot of the statistics. It looks great. It's got this big gun that just feels as if it's so rewarding when you do deliver those double taps. And while I don't want to see every vehicle going into the game completely overpowered, I also feel that Wargaming have never really given this tank kind of its own little niche. I have to admit, when you do raise the gun and use the gun depression like that, that is absolutely amazing. And maybe this is why Wargaming have decided to put the weak point on top of this tank. Because, uh, yeah, let's be honest, if this thing didn't have a weak point and then it could raise its gun 
and not have to expose its cheeks, that would be pretty wild. I guess the thing that you're going to actually have to do in this vehicle, and this sounds pretty weird, is you're probably going to have to actually raise the gun a little bit as you come up over the ridge line until you want to shoot the person and then lower the gun and then kind of raise the gun afterwards to be able to hide that weak point. Is that what's going to be amazing about the Rinocerante? Is it going to be absolute five head tactics on this tank to be able to do this, boys and girls? Uh, yeah, I mean... We'll have to see. Is that going to be the new Rinocerante meta? Probably. Um, but then again, how often do you ever get yourself into a hold down position where you have the dream, right? There's no doubt that hold down, this tank is the dream. And if it didn't have that weak point on top, it would probably be one of the most dominant vehicles on a ridge line. And I don't think we need super fast vehicles. Everything doesn't have weak points. Everything just absolutely smashes the ridge lines, right? Everything's fast, dynamic, incredible at tier 10. It's not what we need inside the game. So there's part of me that is is kind of a, a, like a little bit disappointed with the way that the Rinoceronte is turning out statistically. But there's another part of me that's thinking, hey, this tank, it could just be good or or average and still be quite a fun vehicle to play without having to make the vehicle outrageously overpowered um, and then it would start to to damage the matchmaking of World of Tanks. But on the other hand, when I think about the Kranvang, for example, is anyone thinking that the Kranvang is just outrageously OP and everyone's playing it and it's destroying the, the very meta of World of Tanks? I think that might be a little bit of a stretch. And when we consider that the Kranvang has kind of like doubled the damage per minute of the Rinoceronte, do you know what's hilarious? The time that it takes the Rinoceronte to reload one of its 127mm shells, the Kranvang can nearly reload three. And the Kranvang does 440, whereas the Rinoceronte does 490. Sure, but that just, that just makes you think about how long the reload is in this vehicle that the Kranvang can almost reload an entire magazine in the time that it takes the Rinoceronte to reload a single shell. And remember, if it does go deep into the magazine, literally, it is it is the same apart from 1.5 seconds. So a 20 second reload versus a 21.5 second reload. Combine that with the fact that while the Rinoceronte does have that big alpha damage, 1,470 sounds great in eight seconds. The Kranvang is delivering 1,320 in 5.5 seconds. The Kranvang's gun handling is so darn good that you probably don't need to even use vertical stabilizers or a rotation device on this tank. And it would be the same as the Rinoceronte with the vertical stabilizers and a rotation device on this tank. It also has the better gun depression. It's also the far faster tank. I'd say that it's got the just as good turret armor without also having a weak point on top of the vehicle. Nobody's Nobody thinks that Kranvang's turret is bad, right? Um, yeah, Wargaming, I'm, I, 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 would, I would strongly consider the, what is the purpose of the Rinoceronte? It's slower. It's got worse armor, apart from the hull. It's got worse firepower. It's got worse gun handling. Is it going to be a competitive tank? No, no. It's, it's definitely not going to be a competitive tank if the statistics stay as they are. I think this is going to be a very tricky one for Wargaming to be able to fix because it kind of feels like this pseudo-heavy that isn't really a heavy, that isn't fast enough to be a medium, it's kind of left in this little bit of a no man's land. And while I'm personally looking forward to playing this new tank and putting it through all of its paces on the live server, because I can test you, it's almost, Im I can, I can test you, I can tell you, it's almost impossible to be able to get a full idea of how this vehicle is going to play out in a, in a test server environment. I also think that the statistics of this vehicle will disappoint many. And if the tier nine stays as it currently does, I would thoroughly recommend don't sell the tier nine tank, just like with the IS-3 too. I think the tier 9 tank is going to be better tier for tier. And if you really want to have that hull down kind of faster Italian auto reloading heavy tank vibe that Wargaming kind of promised us with all of their trailers, I think you're going to get that at tier 9 with a turbo rather than jumping up at tier 10 and feeling very disappointed with the Rinoceronte. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that's it for today. I hope this video was useful for you and we had a deep dive into what the Italian auto reloading heavy tanks look like. Hopefully now you're fully prepared to know what you have to do to be able to unlock them, 
how you, the upgrade path should be on these vehicles. I really wanted to focus a lot into that because I want to save you as much free experience as you can, save you the hardship of unlocking the wrong module on the vehicle and making those stock grinds as painless as possible. So yeah, I really hope it was useful. If it was, make sure you give the video a thumbs up, but if you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know in the comments what you think about the Italian auto reloading heavy tanks. Do you think they look good? Do you think they look terrible? And what do you think about the Rinocerante specifically? Do you think that the statistics, do you think that it has enough things about it that still mean that it's going to be at least fun, if not competitive? Or do you think that the vehicle looks like a, a big disappointment? And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.